All right, we're going to get started now. Um, so thanks everybody for taking the time out of your busy afternoon to join us. Uh, my name is Camille Kennedy and I, I work at SIP Interactive. Um, I'm the VP of Marketing here and I'll introduce myself a little bit more in a second alongside my colleague. Um, but we're really excited to have you on our webinar today uh, from Trends to Tech, Navigating In-Store Marketing. Um, today we're going to share a few of the technology solutions that are being uh, widely used at retail and also talk about a few new ones that are kind of up and coming. Um, as always, if you've joined us before, please feel free to submit your questions using the GoToWebinar software. Uh, you can use the panel located on the right-hand side of your screen, and um, we'll do our best to make sure that we answer those and allocate some time at the end for questions. Um, right, so as I mentioned, my name's Camille. Um, I've been in the promotional marketing space for the last five years, and also before that worked at a, a big entertainment media company in the music uh, division. Um, and for those of you who have joined webinars in the past, whether it's been at Hip Digital or at SNP, you might recognize my face over on the left-hand side. Um, and joining me today is my colleague, Jen Horsley. Um, Jen joined SNP in June, and uh, she leads the U.S. Uh, sales team. And she's got over 15 years' experience in um, working kind of in this industry with major retailers, CPG brands, um, technology, and so forth. Um, she's worked with major clients like P&G, Dr. Pepper, Target, Walgreens, etc. Um, so we're really happy to have her here. Um, and we'll be uh, going right into the presentation after she briefly introduces SNP. Hi, thanks so much, Camille. I appreciate it. Hello to everyone as well. So if you'll see on slide three, um, a little bit about SNET. We are a publicly listed company on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Um, we've got 11 offices with 130 people, and we are so privileged to work with some of the, the world's biggest brands and also their great agency partners. Um, I would say at our core, we are really an ever-evolving technology company. We build shopper marketing programs, we build points-based loyalty programs, and sales driving promotions. We're also uniquely positioned in that we offer a proprietary mobile receipt validation process that provides brands with what I call the holy grail, right? The proof of purchase. And then we leverage the data that's on the receipt for promotions, contests, cashback offers, and digital rewards, including our proprietary and, and pre-licensed reward store, which includes everything from music, movie downloads, to gift cards and experiential rewards, like Uber credit, as an example. Great. Uh, thanks, Jen. Um, so next up, I'm just going to kind of give you an overview and we're going to dive right into section number one. Um, but essentially, the trends that we're going to share today, as I mentioned, are, are you know some of the popular ones at retail and our favorites. Um, but really, they're all centered around you know what shoppers are doing at retail and technology is really responding to that. Um, more now than ever, you know, shoppers are using technology to their advantage um, and it encompasses many of the solutions we're going to talk about today, um, whether they're being influenced by their peers before they get into the store, making purchase decisions at the retail aisle. Um, a lot of the purchase decision process consumers have actually taken into their own hands um, by using their mobile smartphones as their main shopping companions. Um, they're connected you know, on the go, they're connected um, while they're in store, and actively seeking out information, deals, and promotions. Um, we've broken our presentation into three sections. Uh, section one is technologies for in-store execution. Section two is technologies for the integrated path to purchase where we'll share some of our favorite uh, social and online community-based marketing um, tactics. Um, and then the third section is going to be up-and-coming tech, uh, some new things that um, are not yet widely adopted, um, or, and some of our favorite things, um, including some cool features that have happened from some of our brand clients. Um, so with that, I'm going to jump right into section one, which is technologies for in-store execution. Um, this section is really about solutions that are being used directly in the retail aisle. Um, over the past few years, we've actually hosted several sessions on this topic, solutions for on-pack promotions at retail, where you know brands can no longer get promotions onto the packaging, whether because of budget restrictions, timing, um, and, et cetera. And so they're looking for different options to, to engage along this path to purchase um, and in-store specifically. Um, and so with that, you know, there's a few other challenges that come up beyond the on-pack codes. There's you know, a need to create some sort of digital and mobile engagement with consumers. Um, consumers really crave that connected, experiential in-store experience, and, and mobile devices are really driving that um, in the retail aisle. But coupled with all of that, there's also clean store policies you know, that have come out from the likes of Walmart where, okay, you can't 
print on pack anymore and you want to engage with mobile, but there's clean store policies, so you can't really do anything in the retail aisle, how do brand, um, consumers know about these promotions? And we'll talk about some of the solutions uh, to kind of get around that today. Um, so up first, um, we've got this notion of proximity marketing. Um, this is essentially marketing that uses technology which distributes wireless signals to display or engage consumers with advertising content. Basically, a consumer's proximity to a specific area um, initiates this type of marketing. Um, and basically, as it's been put by some popular publications, you know, essentially the physical location of a product with respect to a consumer brings about a new dimension that's been previously untapped. Um, some people call this hyper-local marketing, uh, but essentially it's using technology, mostly cellular, to distribute uh, marketing messages down to a consumer's mobile device, whether they're in the vicinity or um, directly uh, beside a product. Now, there's a few different terminologies that you guys have probably heard about, and we just wanted to talk a bit about you know, which ones are still most being widely used today. Um, you've probably heard of both of these, both beacon technology and near-field communication, otherwise known as... Um, NFC. Um, but I'm going to first start with, with Beacon and we'll talk a little bit about that and then uh, the benefits versus you know, near field communication. Um, Beacon or iBeacon as you've probably widely heard it used, iBeacon is Apple's version of a beacon and it's a brand name that's really going to fall into general vocabulary given the huge surge in Apple products and handsets that are being sold. Um, essentially now if you have an iOS uh, 7 enabled device you already have iBeacon and an Apple account. Um, and so essentially any of those apps that you download going forward will all be working with iBeacons. Um, and Apple's also introduced this into their own stores where consumers are now greeted as soon as they walk in the store on their iPhone. Um, and they're shown product information or offered specific promotions. Uh, one of the main um, you know, unique features for Apple specifically is they can actually allow consumers to pay without having to queue right then and there on their devices, uh, which has really increased um, the conversion at retail. Uh, Major League Baseball is also using this. They're creating micro locations in and outside of stadiums where fans who have specific uh, sports apps installed are actually sent relevant promotions about uh, sports uh, memorabilia and content, and it works really well in, in terms of creating that um, both physical and digital engagement. It also works really well for retailers. You know, you walk into a Walmart store and you can get greeted on your phone through your Walmart app with Walmart offers. Um, so it's still really widely used, and it's a little, been a little bit more difficult for brands, um, you know, CPG brands, to, to do this because, um, you know, they don't have as many apps as, as the retailers do, but it is still being used in promotion by popular brands. Um, for example, um, we'll share a few examples down the road um, in this presentation. So the next one is near field communication and essentially this allows you know, two devices to establish communication or a chip and a, and a device to establish communication. You guys have probably all used this at some point whether you're tapping and paying with your credit card as you ex exit the grocery store um, or using Apple Pay or Google Wallet. Um, essentially RFID tags are set up and they can be read um, with frequency using any of the, uh, the apps that can read them. Uh, some brands like Cadbury have been using this technology for years, including promotions you know, at the Olympics where um, everybody was given an RFID badge and they could essentially capture images and photos and post real time to Facebook just simply using and waving their IF RFID badge in front of a like box at the event. Um, I think you know as we go into the fu future of uh, 2016 retail marketing, it's going to be um, it's going to be beacons that really are here to stay for brand promotions. Uh, they're a little bit more intrusive as they're push notifications, but they do cover a wider area. It's not a one-to-one -one interaction like when you tap your debit or credit card um, on a reader, um, and they are able to push out promotions to you. Um, so I think you know the main advantages for brands are being able to kind of create that engagement instantly with a broader audience. Um, but I think that RFID tags will still be widely used in inventory control and also for some other you know means at, at retail for more specific use cases. Um, but they do require that the brand has some form of marketing there to notify the consumer that there is an RFID tag. So there are some limitations. 
Um, just one quick, quick brand example that I wanted to share is a, a brand, Starbucks, which uses both um, near-field communication um, RFID tags, and they also use iBeacons. So if any of you guys have ever bought something at Starbucks, um, you'd be paying for your order using near-field communication. But they're also leveraging beacons um, to create more experiential engagement, especially at places like the Starbucks Reserve um, Roastery and Tasting Room, which is a major tourist attraction in Seattle. They basically have six beacons placed um, in different specific areas to trigger different mobile experiences that help explain the process um, from farm to cup of how Starbucks ha has come to be. And there's also interactive games and animations. So this can be widely used for, you know, QSRs, any sort of retail environment where you can see consumers staying longer and engaging. Um, the next one up is geotargeting, and I'm just going to go over this one briefly. I mean, it's another form of um, proximity marketing, but essentially this is all um, driven off of a GPS, which is integrated into many apps. Um, you know, you guys probably use Uber or something like that, and it knows where you are at all times. Um, Retailers are, are starting to use this feature too. For example, Walgreens um, integrates with Apple's Passbook feature, which uses geofencing to remind consumers uh, to pick prescriptions up before they enter a Walgreens and can remind them about, about that sort of stuff. Um, retailers and QSRs like Pizza Hut are using geofencing um, as well, so they can basically set up a geofence half a mile around all of their Pizza Hut locations. And any popular Pizza Hut um, consumers who have the app on their phone, whenever they're within a mile, they can actually receive SMS and different promotions that go straight to their mobile phone. Uh, the one challenge with GPS is it isn't as good as iBeacon. Um, many of you might know that when you open GPS, sometimes it thinks you're a, a block from where you really are. Um, so, you know, iBeacon is still the more accurate um, targeting tool, um, but GPS is a really close second. Um, I'm going to keep going here and breeze through this section. I mean, you guys all know about QR codes, but, you know, they're really not here to stay, and there's been debate about that over the last few years. Um, I, they've sort of failed to be widely adopted. In fact, it's shocking that 15% of smart device owners today still um, sorry, only 15% of smart devices, device users today actually know how to use QR codes. Um, some alternatives that came up over the last couple of years, again, although aren't widely used, include things like snap tags, and I'll share a few other ones in the coming slides. Um, essentially, snap tags, which is created by Spiderlink, uh, tried to solve this idea that, you know, QR codes were really ugly to look at and people didn't know what to do. And so the simple solution was more of a branded type QR code and allow consumers to take a photo um, and either text or email it in instead of needing to use a QR code reader um, or application. Uh, we've seen some popular brands use these, and I think they work to some degree for brands that are able to communicate properly um, the proposition. Uh, but again, I don't think they're going to be widely adopted kind of moving forward. Um, and that brings me to my next one, which is uh, Digimark barcodes. Um, you know, it's essentially an invisible barcode or invisible code on a package that is actually printed all over the entire package. Um, so, you know, it works for retailers uh, and cashiers who want to ease the pain of having to find the location of the, the barcode when they're scanning products at checkout. It can be also used for promotions. Uh, so, for example, you know, brands can connect with consumers who know that there's uh, Digimark barcodes there and all that the consumer has to do is have an app on their phone. Um, you know, where they have a Digimark reader and they can hover over a brand logo and get engagement. Uh, so they can see videos, um, reviews, and get taken to product information. But again, the consumer needs to know that it's there. It needs to be communicated somewhere in the retail aisle, and they need to have an app on their phone that is easy for uh, scanning these Digimark barcodes. Um, I think the main place we see this, you know, pertaining to retail is the ease of checking out. Um, essentially, if you had a cart filled with products that was covered in Digimarks, you could essentially check out in one foul swoop with, with a reader um, because it would scan the whole cart at the same time. Um, but that means that every brand in that cart, every package in that cart needs to have this kind of packaging, which hasn't been widely adopted yet by uh, fast-moving consumer goods. Um, 
The last one I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to pass you guys over to Jen to talk about uh, store receipts, um, is image recognition. Um, there's been a couple companies over the past few years that do this, and we ourselves are getting still asked by brand partners um, for programs like this, which we which we find really engaging. Um, essentially, you know, whether it's event-based marketing um, or even online engagement, uh, it's essentially where consumers can snap a photo of a brand logo or product package um, or collect several images of product packages over a specific amount of time. And we use our algorithm to identify that indeed they've snapped the correct um, product package, um, you know, whether they're holding a can of Budweiser or Keystone, um, whatever it is, and they can email, text, um, or upload their image and we'll validate the image and send back a response, whether it's a reward or an incentive or a coupon. Um, which brings us sort of the, to the next technology, which relates to this idea of snapping a photo, um, and that's receipt processing, which I'm going to pass you over to Jen to talk about. Great. Thanks, Camille. So to me, I believe that receipt processing is an absolute game changer for marketers. One, because it's very simple for the consumer to do, and two, because it's full of rich data for the marketer. So in general, the way receipt processing is done is through an OCR technology and a manual review. So OCR technology actually stands for Optical Character Recognition, which processes the majority of receipts. And then you have a manual process, which is also followed for receipts that cannot be validated by the technology. So on the next slide, you'll see that this is really an overview of the upload process and really the journey that a consumer takes from in-store discovery of the program to actually all the way down to redemption. So you'll see in the, the first icon, the POS is actually what alerts the consumer to the program. So let's say the program is a buy X, get Y. So consumers make their purchase, they upload their receipt, and they can upload it via SMS, they can upload it via web, they can upload it um, also to a website. Um, that is quickly validated, and then we give the consumer their reward. And there's so many benefits to doing it this way. One. The data that's on that re on the receipt that we're getting tells us where they shopped, when they shopped. Not only what, what did they purchase that is your qualifying product, but now we know everything that's in the basket. So it gives us the ability to really get a full story of that shopping behavior of the consumer um, and doing so without ever affecting the packaging. And it also allows us to have a really great channel for consumer engagement. I'll show you the way that Kellogg's is doing this on the next slide. So Kellogg's Family Rewards has been around for many, many years. Um, but one of the challenges that they were finding is the use of pen on packs. Um, one, it's very expensive. Two, every time you have a new product, you've got to you know, put new codes in all of those packages. Um, so it, it, it does, generally speaking, this can be a very expensive thing for brands to undergo. So they actually replaced the KFR entry methodology to simply receipt processing. So this has eliminated all of their codes and packs, and for those of us consumers that participate in these types of programs, it also eliminates that hassle of typing in the 16 digits, and God forbid you fat finger in one digit, then you have to start all over again. You'll see on the next slide that um, you know receipt processing um, and, and just the receipt landscape, it is super hot right now. There are lots of players in this space. Certainly, it is not just SNP. However, at SNP, we are the leaders in the white-labeled and app-free receipt processing solution. But there are many others, like Retail Me Not. They have their own loyalty app. Um, there's also coupon providers out there. And then there's also your app-based communities, like Ibotta, that all leverage receipt processing within their business. Um, and actually, this is a little bit of a... Um, a buzz for um, a, a program that, that we're going to be doing um, at the Shopper Summit conference. Um, we have a presentation that we're going to be sitting on um, and giving March 16th in New York City. So if you want more information on that, um, please join us um, at the Summer Shop at Shopper conference. So on the next slide, you'll see um, this is really talking about kind of the receipt processing consideration. So if your brand is looking to employ receipt processing for your strategy, these are some of the attributes that you really need to think through and decide when you're picking your partner. So the first one is, you know, do you want consumers to have to download an app? What we found is that participation might be limited, um, and you can certainly get higher participation when you don't force them to download an app. But there's a rhyme and a reason for all of these types of players to exist. 
The other is if you're trying to tie purchase to a program, then receipt processing is the absolute best way to go. Um, I would also recommend that you leverage all of the data from the receipts. So again, looking at when did they purchase, where did they purchase, what channels were driving that purchase. And then, to me, the, again, the kind of holy grail of this is knowing not only what products did they purchase that belong to you and your brand, but also looking at it from a competitive landscape to see what other brands did they purchase and can we impact their future purchase behavior. And then last but not least, we cannot have the um, the thinking that if we build it, they will come. These programs absolutely work best when there is some kind of in-store media to support them. Next okay, slide. great. Thanks. Over. Yeah, thanks, Jen. Um, so that kind of brings us to the end of this first section of the in-store technologies. Um, but ultimately, I know as everyone's seen um, over the last few years, especially with the use of mobile devices, is that the whole path to purchase really needs to be activated. Um, and you know, con converting consumers in store is obviously the winning ticket, but there's opportunity to convert them online. There's opportunity to create engagement points um, all through the path to purchase and get that sale. Um, so we're going to talk about a few things here. Um, I think the first one is before we go into some of the solutions is you know there's really kind of three major complexities to this. Um, the first one is, is that there's a need for brands to engage consumers both pre and post, but it's really hard to tie all of those channels together. Uh, so tying your ad buy to the in-store purchase to the post purchase and engaging with those people. Um, there are brands that are doing this really well by having a really integrated look all through the the path to purchase, um, but it is really hard to do um, because the path to purchase is becoming increasingly complex. I mean, it's no one method that a consumer ends up online or in your store. Um, so we need various trigger points along that path to purchase. Um, and then the real challenge is, is getting the data and making sense of that data across all those those pieces, um, which you know, some partners like ours, um, of, of ours like RevTrax, which we'll talk about in a minute, you know, they're really trying to solve that, and we work closely with um, you know different online forms of media to make sense of both online and then in-store purchase. Um, the reality is that brands are spending approximately 60 billion dollars in digital ads this year alone. Uh, retailers are really leading the way, which is you know different for them in the sense that they actually own that consumer interaction, they own that point of sale, they own the data. So it's a little bit easier for them to figure out what's effectively working. Um, but for some of the CPG brands on the line, um, as you know, it's a big challenge tying to in-store. Um, so some of the popular online you know, advertising platforms that we turn to and that we work with and many of our brand partners do, um, they kind of leverage this notion that uh, consumers are very social, they want to research before they you know, go in store and they're looking for information online, but they're also largely influenced by their peers and by recommendations and referrals. And with that, a few different uh, technology platforms have emerged in the past few years that actually leverage this consumer engagement and create like a community or a loyalty community or audience that brands can tap into. Um, and brands can tap into these communities to not only put offers out to online uh, shoppers and to online um, researchers, um, but also create in-store engagement and online engagement all the way through to actually purchasing a product. Uh, so some of our partners um, here, CrowdTap in the top left, for example, you know, they've done programs with us where people get points for going in-store and taking photos with actual product packaging. So essentially, we've got that person right into the retail aisle um, holding the product. Um, and that has definitely influenced purchase. Um, and then they're sharing it with their friends, for, sort of further influencing that purchase um, in the social network. Uh, there's also um, partners like MyPoints that um, can actually drive you right from online offers and online referrals right to locations online where you can make purchases. And they can track that back to any of their campaigns. Um, and then there's uh, companies like Session M who integrate um, you know, different uh, mechanisms into their uh, engagement apps, like for example with various QSRs, um, and one of the examples um, there is we've actually integrated our receipt processing API right into the platform. So now not only can they engage consumers for you know liking brands on Facebook and filling out a survey, but they can actually also be awarding points um, for one purchase or purchases over time using the receipt processing API. Um, and I'm just going to pass you back to Jen, who's going to share another example of kind of an online coupon platform um, and how they're driving purchase in store through their through their online platform. Yeah, thanks, Cadell. So um, you'll see right here for Retail Me Not. So we do actually um, we have an API with them, which allows us to process 
a receipt for consumers that are participating in their program. And this is a great example for Dunkin' Donuts where they wanted con consumers to purchase $5 in Dunkin' Donuts products and they would get $2 cash back into their PayPal account. And then you'll see on the next slide, you know, with the path to purchase becoming increasingly complex and marketing communications on more channels now than ever before, there really is a need for a solution to track the performance of these channels. You know, are you engaging with the right consumer? What's actually contributing to your ROI? And in the next few slides, we'll detail some of the ways that technology can link all of these channels together. On the next slide, you'll see, um, and this is actually an example that Camille talked about a little bit with RevTrack. RevTrack is doing some great things. And one of the things they're doing is they're actually collecting data on data from personalized offers from brands and retailers. The offers take in information from online engagements from consumers, and then they relate the information back to a special barcode that's then in the promotion, maybe like a, a printable or movable coupon. Then they actually track the path to purchase that that consumer has taken based on all of the data that's been collected. It's pretty fascinating. Camille, back to yeah, you. thanks, Jen. Yeah, so another example of that and some of the stuff that we're doing with our own uh, receipt processing is working with a variety of different partners um, to really enhance the amount of data that we get back from promotions. Um, so we're working with partners like Data DataLogix um, where we can actually tie any of the promotional participants back to really, really rich um, mobile and demographic data that uh, bigger companies like DataLogix who work widely with Facebook um, have access to, um, meaning that you know at the end of a campaign, you know, you're, you're able to ascertain a lot more than, than just what the consumer purchased, but really, really granular detail on who is purchasing and where and, uh, and kind of what makes up their uh, profile in terms of the target uh, demographic. Um, but one last example in this section, and then we're going to move on to sort of up and coming technologies, um, which kind of ties a few things together, is a new um, technology that's just been unveiled from uh, Foursquare. Uh, you guys might have seen the Adweek article that came out last week. Um, but essentially, they're launching a new technology called Attribution, which basically allows them to track foot traffic. And it uses social sharing, but it also uses some of the location-based geo-targeting um, services that we talked about earlier on um, and they're right now in trial with a with a bunch of different brands but essentially they've they've got a few million Foursquare users to agree to have their location tracked at all times meaning that they know every store visit they know um, what they're doing um, where they're going and then with that they're allowing brands you know whether you're a fast food brand or a CPG alcohol brand um, to basically target ads directed at these people and measure which one of those ads is driving traffic in store. Um, so marketers are going to be charged sort of your standard CPM rate for attribution of this um, program and it'll be on a licensing model but this is something uh, you know that's really aimed at uh, taking a, a social platform with geolocation and really tying it back to foot traffic and helping brands measure that in-store ROI. Um, and with that we come to our last section. Uh, I know we discussed quite a few technologies and now we're going to dive into a few that are kind of new mover items or cool technologies that are being featured in store. Um, essentially brands that can kind of tap into some of these first mover or cool new technologies and adopt them and do it well um, can see huge success and huge return on investment. Um, and so the first one that we're going to talk about is wearables and I'm going to pass you over to Jen who's going to talk a bit about wearables, uh, location-based targeting and some integrations with things like Fitbit um, and then I'll close off the presentation with uh, a few more interesting items. Great. Thanks, Camille. So this one to me is just very exciting. So I, I think we can all agree that wearable technology is here to stay. You know, whether that's the augmented reality or fitness trackers, technology has finally gotten to the point where it's sleek and it's functional technology that can actually become a part of your outfit and not just this massive device that you carry around. And, and the onset of wearables opens up a door to a whole new world of marketing possibilities for retailers and a whole new level of useful personalization for customers. And I think that's the key to this. As marketers, we have to hold ourselves accountable for making sure that we are making this very personalized and useful for the customer. So from the, the standpoint of fitness, this is clearly the most popular wearable um, you know, today, whether it's with the Fitbit or the Garmin, um, obviously the, the Apple Watch as well. So you, we all know that this technology can track and record our workouts, our heart rates, our sleep, or in my case, lack of sleep, and other health data. 
and, and the reason we do that is really to, to really lead to self-improvement. And then this data can also be used by marketers to drive ads for certain health or fitness products that would be useful for the consumers. So as an example, let's say a consumer who likes to run every other day starts using an app that syncs with their device. Obviously, they will have given um, the device permission to analyze their data, um, but brands can use this information to infer that, let's say after a certain number of months, a user might actually need a new pair of running shoes. Then they can deliver that customer an ad, not just for new sneakers, but for new sneakers in the customer size that are in a model designed for their specific workout routine. It's a little spooky, but it's also really cool. Um, another opportunity with this is, um, is location-based targeting. So, you know, fitness isn't, isn't really the, the only thing that, that we're able to do with this. It's also an opportunity for location-specific targeting. And things like geofencing, geotargeting, those are not new concepts. They've been around for a long time. But now with wearables, we can apply this in a much more effective way. So, for an example, let's say a customer might make, you know, take a morning walk. They walk past an organic food store every day. That store could now begin to send customers ads for certain products like organic coffee or breakfast items since they know that they're walking by every morning. So while this sort of location-based marketing can be used with mobile devices like your phone, I think that wearables provides a much more intimate experience. And the key here is that if it is crafted with the right creative content, then the ads will actually become recommendations rather than just an ad or a product pitch. And um, research actually suggests that wearable technology is projected to drive a potential operational savings of $1 billion by 2017. So I'll repeat my opening statement, which, I, which is really wearable technology is absolutely here to stay. Camille? Yeah, I think, were you going to share one more example, Jen? Oh, I do. This I have one, one here? more example with you. Yeah. Yeah, and this, <laughs> Good. this example is, is really awesome. This is um, a company that we actually have the privilege of working with called Leader in Shoe. Um, they're a massive um, shoe company in the UK. And this is a great example of innovative technology um, that is really allowing them to have a very different experience with their customers. So this is actually a 3D scanning device. It's in about 20 of their locations. And it actually scans the consumer's foot, um, and then it will make the recommendation for the perfect shoe and the perfect size for them based on all the details that the 3D scan sends back to them. So um, for people who um, do a lot of shoe shopping, this is a great thing for them. It also is really great for, for men who walk into a store and say, listen, I don't know exactly what I, I need, but I need a brown pair of shoes or a black pair of shoes, this gives Leader and Shoe an opportunity to, to give that consumer a great experience and the perfect shoe with the perfect fit for them. Now back to you, Camille. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jen. Um, so the last one I just wanted to talk about, and I mean, Jen kind of touched on it in that Leader and Shoe example, but, you know, more and more, um, re especially retailers, are finding ways to bring digital in-store. Um, you guys have maybe seen um, some examples of this um, in your shopping or use something like this at your brand or agency yourself. Um, but, you know, again, going back to that point about creating more conversion points, um, often retailers or brands are out of stock of certain products, out of stock of certain sizes um, as well, and so there's an opportunity to convert and still complete a purchase while the consumer is in store. Um, and I think a really great example of this, um, you guys may have seen, it's been around for a couple years now, is what Rebecca Minkoff has really done with this digitally connected store. Um, basically, the shop merges online and physical shopping all in one. And so there's these connected walls that feature a big mirrored display that can show videos, inspirational content, and it also enables um, interactions with shoppers where they can touch the surface. They can even request to get help from a store associate or ask to prepare a fitting room, um, order drinks, um, and, you know, and order product right then and there in the, in the retail location. Um, so it creates this environment that's really tailored for the consumer's needs. Um, and, and as we see more and more integrations of, of cool technology in store, I think we're going to see a lot more opportunity for um, consumers to have that digital experience while they're in store and opportunity to convert to purchase uh, without needing to go uh, through the traditional cash register. Um, 
So with that, it actually brings us to the end of our presentation, and we're going to have time to answer a couple of questions, and then we'll uh, we'll let all of you guys go back to your busy days. Um, so just before we go um, on a quick pause to to answer some questions, I just wanted to let you know that we do have another upcoming webinar that will be sent out in uh, I think next week or the week after. Um, we're teaming up with a big agency that's going to be attending all the sessions at South by Southwest. Uh, so if any of you on the phone aren't able to make it to South by Southwest, um, we'll be, be bringing you the, the greatest uh, takeaways from that conference, um, and that will be hosted early April. So uh, stay tuned for that invite. And um, for the, those of you that can stay, we're just going to put you on a brief pause, and we'll come right back to answer those questions. <laughs>